remember this is. Joe D, podcast number 97, I think. <laughs> this is Alex Caravan, VP of BizOps, drinking a Attack of the Space Cat, local Glendale, California, Hazy FPA, for my boy. Got my, got my guest on. How y'all doing? I'm, I'm Mitch. We're, uh, we're going with Bud Light Limes today. That's, that's so, the usual. That's, that's the go-to. And, and yeah, we already got sauced a little bit beforehand. So, uh, you guys are in for a, for a treat. Uh, wait, by the way, do you actually drink Bud Light Limes as like your go-to or is that just cause we have like a fuck ton of Bud Light Limes? Yeah, no, Bud Light Limes are the go-to, uh, that, that process kind of started when I was out in Arizona. Uh, cause originally I thought Bud Light Limes were a seltzer. And I found out it was a beer. Yeah. And I, I haven't gone back since, dude. But, like, like what are we talking about? Don't you say, like, 100% of the beers you drink are Bud Light Limes? No. No, I'll drink anything wet and cold. But, like, <laughs> if I have a preference, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take a Bud Light Lime. Okay. 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 Yeah, because I remember, um, what, what was the event that got us, like, hundreds of Bud Light Limes? It was, like, some party, right? Uh... It was some type of like attendance. It might have been during the pandemic where we got yeah, like a hundred cases of Bud Light Limes or something like yeah. that. Yeah, but you know, big fan, there big a couple, supporter. Yeah, there were a couple of pods where where me, Lindley, and Brady are like trying to do it in, in gym, and we're like hustling around looking for beers. And we're like, oh, we'll just go to the strength fridge and grab one of the like two hundred Bud Light Limes that are there. there. But uh, that's right, dude. Anyways, that's right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Give, give us, give us, your, give us, give us your title at, at driveline and like a little bit, a little bit of background. Whip us through, uh, whip us through who Mitch Vital is. Uh, right now, I'm the assistant uh, player development coordinator. Uh, still, still running gym ops. Uh, you know, just helping out with the training floor and uh, getting our facilities dialed. But my, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know how to describe it. Though, the only thing I got going is the only reason I got a job is Max Gordon, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, shout out Gordo. Let's yeah. <laughs> shout out Gordo for the whole episode. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, I, I was training well, there. You, and you give, there's a baseball background, like like, like you, you're a cup of tea with the, with the M's, drive line, yeah. starting with gym ops. <laughs> dude, I, I remember, well, before before you, before you go, I remember uh, one thing I remember about you early on is you were showing up. You were, like, running two, you were doing two jobs, right? You were, like, just coming off, like, some... I don't know, some random, I mean, I forget what the job is, but you you were, like, wearing, like, a suit and tie or something, right? Or not a suit, but, like, a collared shirt. Uh, yes and no. Uh, well, because I had, had two different jobs. So, like, while I was training, I was working uh, for Red Bull in, like, North Seattle. Uh, they, they got a, a big spot there. So, we'd, like, run events for them and stuff like that and work for their logistics and warehouses and stuff. And then uh, early in the mornings, I'd be doing landscaping. So, <laughs> yeah, dude, I was uh, yeah, we wearing the collar shirt for that. Yeah, I was wearing the collar shirt for landscaping, just looking pretty. But yeah, dude, burn the candle at both ends, training, and then yeah, I was just playing baseball, just living the dream, really. Yeah. Uh, the the reason I showed up at Drive Line is because I was playing for the for the studs, just because I just finished college, I didn't get drafted. But, so what, what, like, year, what year is this? When did you start playing for the studs? I started playing for the studs in 2012 or 13 oh, after I was man. playing Juco ball, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, played Juco at Everett up north. And then as soon as I became a pitcher, my sophomore year, uh, went and played for the studs. Shout out Barry Aiden, the GOAT, dude. Yeah, you can attest to it with, uh, <laughs> with Anthony Brady, dude. Um yeah, started doing that, and then uh, from Everett, I went to the College of Idaho, and there I was uh, a PO my first year, and then second year I was a two way. I played short and pitched, and then didn't get drafted, but loved playing baseball, and I was still playing for the studs. And that's uh, the Aiden family. Cody Aiden was working at Driveline at the time. This is like way back in the day, and then uh, he was like, you know, gave me an opportunity to come train there. I was super down, so I was training, working a couple jobs just to make ends meet. And then a uh, couple – it was my first year out of college. First year out of college, uh, trained uh, Jack Scheidemann. I put on, uh, put on 40 pounds and gained 10 miles an oh. hour. Oh, really? You put on 40 pounds? What would what, 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 you go from? From what to what? I, w- I went from, like, 170 to 210. Okay. 
Yeah, he got me on like gallon of milk and little Caesar's pizza <laughs> a day, dude. I was just crushing any food I could get and just staying at the gym. Like and when my job was done, I'd just go to the gym, stay there all night. Pretty much just like eat all my food there, go home and like. What, what was all time highest velo you, you've thrown? Ninety six point nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and when, when was that? That was twenty. It was my last full season with the studs. So it was after I was done playing pro ball. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I got I got let go from the Mariners, and then I went back to the studs just because I like yeah. I still wanted to play, and yeah. my, my so job would me to. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it was fun as hell. Uh, wait, so, so so how hard were we throwing the Mariners? I mean, that, that was 2017, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so the Mariners picked me up after my stud season after college. And then we made it to Wichita, the NBC World Series. Yep. And I threw really well. I was like low to mid-90s all year, uh, doing good. And it's actually a pretty funny story. Uh so just like through the grapevine of the bros at driveline, um, I heard that Bodie threw my name in a hat to like Mariners looking for arms. Yeah. And like, I wasn't even like entertaining the fact that I could play pro ball. I was just playing for the studs and like, it was fun as hell. Yeah. So like I shot Bodie either a text or a call and was like, yo dude, thanks for doing that. Like you didn't have to throw my name in the hat or whatever. Yeah. And he was like, dude, don't even mention it. Like you're, you're doing good. And then like, 12 hours later, like we had just finished a game in Kansas and we're drinking beers after the game, like just one. And I get a call from like a scout and he's like, oh, Mitch Vito, like, how you doing? This is so-and-so from the Mariners. I was like, what, dude? <laughs> like, all right. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, I got to play two years of pro ball, a cup of tea in the AZL, dude. Didn't make it far uh, at all, but it was, it was fun as hell. Great experience. Yeah. And then, uh, I, I just did not pitch good. They they picked me up after I threw like seventy innings for the studs as a starter, and then they yeah. had me closing randomly. Yeah. Uh, it was it was weird, but it so, was fun so, too. It, it, it was uh yeah yeah. What, what league were you pitching in? Single A, uh, the AZL, dude. AZ, oh, AZL. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was like twenty three, or yeah, I was twenty three, playing with like eighteen year olds, yeah. and like. It was just weird having like life experience. Like I've already been like working jobs. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "What's what's up, guys? <laughs> How's it going?" My coaches are like my age. Yeah, I'm just like, you know, it, it was fun. Have you heard uh, Angle's story about uh, when, when he uh, like right before he quit, or right before he got like he, he like when he was we was pitching with the, like the Naps like single A or double A team, and like the game before, or maybe like day oh I, f- I forget, but like him and a bunch of like people on that team. And you're all like younger than him. Mm. We're like in the dugout, like kind of like spitball, and like how much money would it take for you to like quit baseball? You know, just quit it, like quit pro baseball, whatever. And everyone's saying like insane numbers, you know, like one million, like whatever. Even though obviously, like the player value of like someone, in, 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 you know, in that spot is like way less than one million. And Angle's is like a thousand dollars. And they're like, <laughs> like, like, come on, man, don't say that. He's like, all right, fine, ten thousand dollars. And like the next day, or and, and he like went, it just got lit up. And next day, he like went into. Um, like whatever, like his manager's office was like, yeah, I think I'm done, man. <laughs> you know? And then after he's like, yeah, sure. I mean, a hundred percent, I would have taken a thousand dollars. But yeah, like, give, give us some minor league stories. Like what, what was the grind? Like, like did you guys have to do hop on any, I, I had Esco on a couple, a couple of uh, podcast episodes ago. And he was talking about like grabbing buses from like, you know, like grabbing overnight buses and getting like flown back out to like some other assignment. Oh, dude, it wasn't even that. The AZL, you're just like, you're yeah, just playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, nothing nothing too crazy. It was just like, you know, kind of ridiculous from my viewpoint. Like, I was having fun just like yeah. worrying about baseball every day. But yeah. like, at the same time, you got to report to the facility at, you know, seven in the morning for like meetings or whatever. Yeah. And... I'm hanging out with. I'm out on that. <laughs> well, it wasn't even that. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't like I gotta, you know, actually work. It was like, okay, I gotta check in, eat breakfast, do all this, and like, we had to wear collared shirts, and like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I, I'm used to showing up to work with like 
Yeah. <laughs> Carhartt and a... Well, that's what I'm saying, dude. I remember you, like, for the first couple of days, or first couple of weeks at Driveline, when you're running gym ops, I, I swear to God, I, I thought you were wearing, like, a collared shirt. Like, you might have been going out, coming off the non-landscaping job. But I thought you, like, showed up, like, looking really professional. And I was like, I know this dude is not that professional. <laughs> and he's, he's wearing... <laughs> Damn, dude. He's wearing a collared shirt right now. It might have been for, like, some Red Bull events or something like that. Like, they yeah, got right. that soapbox derby and stuff like that, and that would help them move around yeah. the product and, you know, deal with vendors and stuff. So, like, I'd probably come train after that. But, like, we were just, like, showing up, and I'm like, <laughs> they were making it, like, way more professional than it needs to be. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've been around baseball my entire life, and it's like, yeah. you know, I, I get that it's a job, but it's like, yeah. I'm about to go sweat in 100 degrees. Yeah. And, like, why am I showing up in the two polos that I own? Yeah, yeah. You know, like <laughs> at the same time, at the same time, just just for one to like wear the sweat and you take it off. Hell yeah, dude! Oh, it was it was brutal. Like, so I'm, you know, I'm born and raised in Washington. Like, went went to school in Idaho, and then so like when it was like 110 degrees, I was out there struggling, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, never exposed to that much sun Wait, ever. Wh- wh- which which part of Idaho? Uh, so like just right by Boise, actually, okay. it's uh Caldwell, God's country. Shout okay. out College of Idaho, dude. The, the only reason I know Idaho pretty well is because I've driven to like Brady's family's Thanksgiving a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, yeah, I was, I was, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I know well, Idaho Falls. I know Boise. I mean, it's pretty much all I know, but, uh, but yeah, I, I've driven through like 40 cumulative hours of Idaho c- country. I mean, dude, amazing, like hiking in, in Idaho. I feel like, like that's its main appeal. Like, it's got like crazy mountains. I mean, not main appeal. I'm not trying to piss off any people from out of home, but like you know, it, it's got like phenomenal uh, geographic variety. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a uh, it's an amazing place in in general. Like growing yeah. up in North Seattle area, and I go yeah. to a like small college that is pretty much the size of my high school, and yeah. it you you meet some really cool people, and you know that. <laughs> they they hate people like me just because like I've seen billboards there it just says like keep Californians out and I'm like yeah. all right I, I can understand why dude <laughs> I love you <it> here <laughs> yeah what what, 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 are, what are uh I mean yeah what's like pitching for the studs also when when was the last inning you threw for the studs because I feel like like you know living with Brady over the last like bro I've lived with Brady since like February 2019 probably um. And, you know, so I've heard of, like, a bunch of stud stories. He always tells me, like, oh, yeah, Paul, like, Mitch is, like, the most, like, you know, or up there and, like, the most, like, gangster, like, just no worm up or, like, throwing in Crocs, rolling in, throwing 95, arm feels <laughs> dead, ready to go for seven innings the next day. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what, like, what, what, what was kind of, like, the stud's uh, backstory? What was, like, behind the scenes? Uh, there's, there's so many good stud stories, but, like, I, I have to just, like, give credit to all the OGs that I've seen since, like, 2012, 2013. Like, 30-year-old dudes yeah. who, like, played double-A ball, but they still love baseball. Yeah. And we're going out and playing against, you know, JUCO or yeah. college kids yeah. or D1 yeah. kids. And you got 30-year-old dudes showing up after their full-time job and, you know, raising their kids. Yeah. Just like, yeah, I'm going to throw, like, upper 80s, low 90s, sometimes mid-90s. Yeah. Dominate you. And then I'm going to yeah. go home back to my like <laughs> wife and kids. And, uh, you know, can't, I can't even describe, like, the studs. The head coach, Barry Aiden, just super professional, loves baseball. Like, baseball is, <laughs> like, everything to him. And that's why you got to love it. He treats everyone like adults, whether you're an old OG guy or, yeah. you know, if, if you're, like, a pretty good 18-year-old who's in JUCO. You know, he'll, he'll give you a chance. But, like, at the end of the day on that team, if you don't perform, like, you just don't play. Because, yeah. like, we'll, we'll play in tournaments that it's, like, in Canada for, like, Yeah, he's, like, just about winning, basically. Like, like yeah, no, 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 no holding someone's hand, like, like pretty merit-based. Yeah, like, my first couple of years there, like, I thought it was hot shit. Yeah. And, like, I had a bad outing. And he's like, yeah, you're not throwing in, like, any of the, the money games. Just because, like, No. Like you have to prove yourself. You have to like. That's why he loves Brady. He'll Brady shows up and like he'll answer the bell, and like he'll succeed. But like, if you have a rough couple outings, like you're not going to see that much playing time, no matter who you are. Yeah, and it's it's awesome. So 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 when when was the last time you pitched for the Suds? Oh God, uh, probably like 
two years ago, two summers ago. Uh, so this was like my first full year, not like my last two summers ago, that season was when like, I didn't train as much. I was just like lifting, but I wasn't training throwing as much. So like I could still step on the gas pedal for throwing, but, uh, my arm care (laughs) wasn't as great as it used to be in my playing days. So like the, I think it was the first inning and the first batter got him like, Oh, two. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try and throw hard here. And, like, my arm felt good, but my velo was only, like, I think it was, like, 91. And yeah. I tried to step on the gas pedal, and I've never had an elbow injury ever. And I just felt a big pop in my elbow. And I just look, and I'm like, oh, no. And I tried throwing another one, and it was, like, 20 miles an hour slower, and my arm looked like a balloon. And I was like, all right, well, I'm 20, I think it was, like, 27 or 28 at the time. And yeah. I was like, oh, boy, that's that's good. That one's on me. But the year before that was, like, one of the better stud seasons I ever had, yeah. like, fresh out of pro ball. No, I, I mean, I remember, like, Brady talking about it, like, just talking about you like you being nails or you, you hopping in after, like, limited, you know, like, you'd be, just be hopping in, throwing innings, hopping back out, come back in as a starter, like, on, on short notice. Uh, wait, so, so what's, what's happening with your elbow? I, I actually don't know this. So, like, have you – Oh, it's – it's yeah, partially so, It's still ballooned to show it on camera, dude. <laughs> oh, no, it's it's all good. Like, I, I didn't get surgery. Yeah. I'm too old to get surgery. Like, I'm not trying to play professional or nothing. Yeah. But, like, I'll still throw every now and then and, like, crank it up. It just sounds like a creaky door and hurts every yeah. now and then. But, yeah. Yeah, so, like, that at my actual last, like, full season of the studs, uh, that's, like, the last time. When was that? I want to say it was, like. Wait, was that the year? You guys. You guys won in 2019 or 2020, right? I think it was 2019 was like yeah. my last full year. Yeah. And we, we won the tournament. Yeah. And it was like, that's sick. That's like, that's when I PR'd for VLO yeah. and yeah. and everything. It was, that was fun. That was a fun tournament in Kansas. I, I think Brady, yeah. I think Brady told me like, he, he like, he got his like rib popped or something when you guys all dogpiled or something on top of him. Yeah. Right? Didn't he? Cause I went to Thailand with him after. I went to Thailand with him after, dude. Did, did you know this? Uh uh-uh. uh. Bro, so I went with Brady to Thailand right after the tournament. And oh, he was like, kind of. Right. And he's like, you know, like, he, he, like, Brady has like, Brady like doesn't complain about stuff and has like a high pain tolerance. So he's like, whatever, like, my rib kind of hurts, whatever. First day in Thailand or first day in like Chiang Mai, we flew in, uh, checked in our hostel, we're, like walking around. I was like, dude, Thai massages are like three bucks. Like, let's hit a massage. You know, like, I, I like massages. I just don't buy them because I don't, I can't like spend a hundred bucks on massage. So like, yeah. let's just do it. And he's like, all right. He's like, he's like, my rib kind of hurts, but like, whatever. And I was like, all right. You know, like, you, like you'll know better than me, like when to hop out. And, um, <laughs> you, like, you, you know, you know what time massage is? Like when, when you like walk all over you and stuff. You know, oh, is that where they're walking on your back? Yeah. Yeah. Like they'll walk on you. They'll like pull, you know, like, like, yeah, they'll like bounce on, on like on the other side of the spine. It, 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 it's, it's pretty intense. And you, you can like write like whatever you want, like, you know, more intense, whatever. I don't know what Brady wrote, man. But like, like, I mean, again, for me, it was like a lot of pressure, but like, I, I like it. And I, I didn't have like the fucking pop rib. <laughs> and then we get out of it and Brady's just like, man, I'm a hundred percent sure my breath is broken. I was like, why did you, <laughs> it's like, why did you do the massage? And he's like, I don't, I mean, you were doing it. I just figured I'd, I'd do it. It's only three bucks. And I was like, all right. <laughs> and like for the whole trip, he's just like, bro. I, Cause I remember we went on a hike uh, and Brady loves hiking. Like we went on like a big hike. And it was like raining, whatever. We like got to like right under like the the, the big des- or the big ascent that had like whatever like thirty or forty switchbacks. And also we were like running low on time. I was like, "Yo, we gotta hit this. If we got if we hit this, we gotta go fast." And he's like, "I, I think I have a broken rib from the massage. We gotta go back." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> very very fair." Um, yeah, and yeah, host was on the team. Budnick was on the team. I remember because he made like that 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 first uh first base play. Um, so, yo, by the way, speaking of speaking of um. <laughs> Dude, I, I gotta get Bunning on the podcast at some point. I, I haven't talked to him in, in, a, in a while. Do, do you know? Bunning's you know a man. Do? Yeah, Bunning's a man, dude. I, I used to call him the. I used to call him the king of um, Shingle Town. <laughs> oh my lord! <laughs> yeah, funny, funny story about Budnick. I think uh, so. I, I've known the Budnick family for like a long time. Oh yeah. I think my dad played fast pitch softball with his dad, so like yeah. we knew each other growing up. Budnick's a man, dude. Oh, I thought you were going to tell a story, dude. I thought you were going to tell... No. I'll, I'll, I'll tell... No. Oh, you're not going to tell a Budnick story? No, I got I got some some Budnick stories, but he's a he's a happy man now, dude. He's, he's oh, yeah. an adult now. Yeah. What do, you, what, do you, what do you mean? 
Budnick, Budnick's got some <laughs> some good energy. Him and Brady used to compete in eating competitions for yeah, the studs yeah. back in the day. And then, uh, well, after that, they just started fat shaming each other yeah, pretty yeah, intensely, yeah. calling each other out. But yeah, dude, both Budnick and and uh, and Brady, big hockey guys, big yeah, hockey yeah, that's, guys. That's dude. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll always hold my Budnick story then. The the, the 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 king of shingle town but but if you somehow uh watch this episode which which you might i'll, I'll just give a visual cue for what i'm talking about this is why bunny's thinking of shingle town i remember him in line uh, at shingle town like this <laughs> one time oh no dude <laughs> that, that, that's all oh, i'll say no bro that's all i'll say <laughs> oh my lord um but uh, yeah, yeah how long do you think uh brady's gonna pitch for the studs Forever, dude. Forever, because we got we used to have. Uh, he's going for a league our, strikeout record, right? Like he's going time. for it, but yeah. but I don't I don't think he'll he'll get it because we got. Uh, he doesn't play anymore, but there was a uh, the closer before him. His name's Tay Tom. Uh, <laughs> he's side armor as well, but he threw about sixty miles an hour. Yeah. So like, he never had an inning limit. He never. Because he was just flipping it in there, and I think he played for close to fifteen years. So like he's in the NBC Hall of Fame. He holds like almost all of the pitching records yeah. for most of all of that. And I don't know if Brady can keep up with that, dude. I mean, I'll say behind the scenes, like Brady's been I never record for a couple of years. Like he's he's been telling he's been like we've been, he's been like mapping it out. Like if I keep up this K rate for like this amount of years and then play like this much longer with a lower K rate, I'll hit him in like you know twenty XX. You, you know, like he's definitely had his eye on it. I've been talking to him super recently about it, but he's had his eye, eye on it. I'll have to hit him up, dude. Is he still training? Is he still getting after it? I think so. I haven't seen him in a while because uh, last time I was in Seattle, he was in um, he was in Clearwater. For the fills, I, I think no, yeah, no, just last time. I was about to say both of the last two times, but yeah, yeah. I mean, studs didn't start. When does it start? Like late May, early June. Yeah, late May, early June, and then it's like seventy days of straight baseball. Like you get one yeah. or two off days, yeah, and like you know four or five big travel days, whether it's Alaska, California, Kansas, whatever. But damn, dude, that stuff's fun. That stuff's fun. Studs is uh, hard to compete with, dude. Yeah. Hard to compete yeah. with. I, I was going to ask you about the uh, Arizona facility. I mean, like, as, as, as most Jordan fans know, we have an Arizona facility now. We've kind of changed locations a couple times. And, and we're, you know, behind the scenes, we're, like, probably looking to expand uh, continuously. Um, we have, and, 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 you know, you, like, you had a, a huge role, obviously, in, like, tracking down that facility and, and going for a couple uh, potential plans. Give us, give us some behind the scenes alpha. Like, what, what was it like trying to get a facility that would match our like, you know, requirements? Enough space, enough like autonomy, our ability to bring in technology, whatever. Give us a juice. Yeah, it's a it's a difficult like window to fit. Um, you know, the the first thing like that's difficult is when you're looking at commercial industrial spaces like a yeah. warehouse. Like, it's all usually made for a company that just has a warehouse. So like whether it's me or a broker talking to whoever, it's like, yeah, we're going to put a baseball facility in here. There's probably going to be some holes in your walls, some loud music. Like that, that's the the first thing where it's like, probably not. And probably some dude trying to throw hands based on what we were talking about (laughs) before we started recording, probably probably some dude trying to throw hands. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, you know, with, with all the dudes we got in there, whether it's high school, college, professional, like it's some pretty intense stuff. And <laughs> talking to a normal real estate dude, it's like, yeah, so here's here's what we do, and you know, here's some of the guys we've worked with. Be prepared for this place to be an absolute zoo. Um, is a uh, not the easiest conversations to be had, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean Scottsdale, the the location we have now is is gorgeous is uh, I mean, uh, to, to get through, cause you initially have like a pop-up location, right. And then we had the Yakutek facility and now we have, yeah, we, or, or was a pop-up in Yakutek the same one? I, I forget. No, there was two different ones. Okay. There's so, two, so then we've been in three different places in AZ, right? I think two of the same places, but three different times. There was the first pop-up that was 
I'm not sure what location, but I think it was closer to like Glendale or something like that. Okay. And then after that, we had a, that's when I went down for like four or five months. And that's when we were at the, the Yakutech spot in Phoenix. And they were gracious enough to, you know, let us, let us run kind of like a, a testing center there. And, you know, I, I had to be a trainer for like five months just to, to make it work. And that was a, a fun time. And then, you know, we uh, drive on hit uh, a little bumpy road from there on after. But when we left, I think it was me, Spencer, Gordo, Sammy, because we had that one in Texas too. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, guys yeah, from yeah, Texas yeah. came down to Washington or uh, Scottsdale, excuse me. And we ran that for like a couple extra months and we, we were gaining some traction. And then we came back to Washington and then sent a whole new crew down to Phoenix and then ran that for a little bit. And then, you know, it, it got big enough to the point where it's like, we need our own spot, like to, to call home there. Yeah. And you know, that's kind of where that process finally began. And it took, it took a few, few months, almost like, I think it was eight, eight months to like finally lock in a spot in Scottsdale. Yeah. Um, well, well, speaking of speaking of you, gas third, gaslighting. I don't know. I said gaslighting. I was about to say uh, night lighting as, as a trainer. Um, I mean, I've, I've heard a bunch of stories about you just like slapping on Crocs and, and throwing like ninety two of the gray ball or whatever. So, yeah, give give us a secret behind Crocs. How, how do Crocs help uh, help you pitch better? So the secret behind Crocs is it's it's comfortable. All right, like if you're in the office and you're rocking Crocs, yeah, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You stay loose. Yeah. Are, are you doing Crocs with socks on or, 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 or no socks? Right like now, we're rocking it with okay. socks. Okay, okay, you know, okay. We, we got the, the Nike Sports house mode. socks on right now. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're posted up. We're chilling in Crocs. Um, I just stay loose and ready, you know. And, you know, if it's a velo day out on the floor and these these young kids think 88 or 90 is hard, like that's – you got to give people a taste of reality. You yeah. know, because I, I wasn't that good at baseball. Like, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> and if I can come out of working on a computer for five hours and come throw harder than you, like you either got to work harder or rethink your options, dude. So uh, I'll get out there every now and then, you know, and now I got half a UCL, so I got to be a little bit smarter, but I'll still go out there every now and then and, and see yeah. what's up. What, what, uh, well, I was going to say like, like if you, if you had to go right now, blow it out, top velo, what do you think you hit? We're we talking baseball or plyos. Go us both. Both. So I did this. I was feeling froggy at my desk, like, I want to say a month and a half ago. And there was I'm a velo day. I'm, dude, I know you're feeling froggy all the time, dude. I am. I am. But some people can't handle a, a hard reality when I go out there. Um, so I threw a gray ball. I think it was 94.8 in, in Crocs and no warm-ups. And then after like a few warm ups with a baseball, I just like threw a few, gave it a couple of these. Yeah. Uh, I hit 92 9 with a baseball. Okay. Like, okay. you know, obviously I'm not in shape. So my arm was hanging for like three weeks and it was swollen as hell. But, uh, you know, so some people, some people need a, to, to be humbled real quick because I know I'm not that good at baseball. So, like, you got to, you got to figure it out quick, no matter what level you're at. Like, I don't know if you've been paying attention to college baseball right now, but, there's freshmen throwing a hundred, like in yeah. all SEC schools. So, so, so you basically save it up for like three weeks at a time, just humbling someone, and then you're like, all right, I got, I got, I got to rest. And this yeah. motherfucker needs humbling. <laughs> I just gotta, gotta sense the vibe of the floor. If it's like actually high energy and people yeah. are into it, you know, like I'm, I'm not trying to kill dreams. I'm just gonna try yeah. and give them a taste of reality. Yeah, yeah exactly. If, uh, you're, trying, you're, trying, you're trying to fine tune dreams, like not for you, bro. Not yeah. for you. Yeah, if I see a college guy getting hopped up on like throwing a gray ball ninety miles an hour, it's like you know you got to reset your focus now, dude. Yeah, yeah. All right, so so, so let's talk the stuff you're you were you were ready to talk about uh, off air. Rule changes. What you got, bro? <laughs> Rule we, got, changes? we got no shift. We got pitch clock. I mean, we don't have to get into nitty gritty about how that affects like you know approach, stats, whatever. Just just give, give it to me raw, like right off the bat. What are you thinking? What are you looking forward to? Do you think it's a good move? What other rule changes are you like potentially excited for? So the 
the one that like I don't really have a take on is the the shift rule. Like obviously it's very smart if a guy pulls the ball sixty percent of the time or more to yeah. shift. Like to get more offensive play, ban the shift. Like I can get behind that a little bit. But the bases baseball has been known as a game of inches. If the base yeah. is bigger, you know, like there are those small opportunities, whether it's a grounder up the line that it hits the bag, whatever, like that one. I, I can see that being a little little controversial, you know, like yeah. someone hits a dribbler up the line and it hits the bigger side of the bag. Like I'd be I'd be pretty pissed if I was a pitcher and I see it like barely nick the corner of the bigger yeah <laughs> bigger things and be pissed about that. But obviously the hottest take on all the rule changes right now is about the pitch clock. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. The, the, the pitcher has the rock in his hand, dude. He can control the game. And they're taking that away from pitchers right now. And, like, let's, let's start off with some simple stuff. Pitching the ball, throwing it at high velocities is a violent, fast action. And you're going to condense the time to, to make it more cardio and less of explosive action. Like, there's a good chance that more injuries like come up because of it. Like I know when I pitch, I'd like to, if I just got O2 on a guy or three O on a guy, take a deep breather, walk around the mound, you know, like let's, let's slow that down, slow the game down a little bit. That's like one of the best parts of baseball is being able to do that as a pitcher and like to tell them 20 seconds, like you, you got to get going, dude, yep. more mistakes are going to be made. It's going to screw with the game. Not a big fan. Not a big fan. I don't like that, dude. That's whack. <laughs> do, do, do you think, uh, like, would, would there be a cutoff that you would be, a, like, a fan of? Or are you just, like, out on pitch clocks overall? Like, if, if it was 30 seconds, would you be down? 40 seconds, would you be down? Or or just, like, no pitch clock is, is your uh, preferred? I mean, no pitch clock. Like, all those dudes are professionals that are playing at the MLB level. You know what I mean? Like, they're not trying to sit there for – forever either like they have a job to do and that's like let's let them do do their job to the best of their ability yeah you know like that's as like a true baseball fan like that's what i want to see i understand people are trying to pump the viewing numbers up and shortening the game like for for people who truly enjoy baseball like that's not it dude like do you want to see shohei otani throw 102 and like rest in between pitches or like get tired out and throw like Only 97, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I've looked at the numbers. I, I, I'm curious. I mean, I know Odotani Trout at bat that, that finished the WBC. I, I know that did not. That was not within 20 seconds. I know people were like using that as an uh, as like a counterpoint, like kind of what you're saying. Like none of those pitches, or I don't know about none of those pitches, but like I, I know like not all of them, all, not all of them came within like 20 seconds. Um, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. I actually haven't done too much analysis, but I'm, I'm curious as well, like like how much it's going to affect velocity. I was at Saber in uh, Arizona a couple, what is it, two weeks ago, and they had a panel on the rule changes, and Dallas Braden uh, was on it. And, he, I mean, first of all, I, I like Dallas. I uh, I met him one time out of 2018. <laughs> it's a funny story. I met him one time at, 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 a, at 2018 winter, winter meetings. We, we, like, it was me, like me, Bodie, Mike, Sam Breen, and Ochart went to – uh, winter meetings for, for driveline. We had like 18, like, like meetings with like teams. It was like a pretty packed schedule. And we threw like a media party one of the nights. And so we had like a bunch of media members come there and <laughs> they were, they were like, they were like, <laughs> I'll tell the story. There were like two women at the party and, and I saw, and like, uh, both of them like, uh, decently attractive. And I saw Dallas Braden talking to one of them. And I literally came in and like, like hopped in the combo because of that. And I remember like Dallas Braden was like talking, telling some like, Oh yeah, I was at this crazy bar, like blah blah. Like people were like swinging from like swings, whatever. And I was like, yeah, I was at this crazy bar in like Budapest, Hungary, and like blah blah. Like just completely. <laughs> that's my main interaction with Dallas Braden. If he, if he ever watches this episode, shout out Dallas Braden. But no, like um, the rule change panel. He was like very. He was like a little bit like almost like hot takey, but he's like, he's like no, they're elite adjusters. They're gonna adjust the pitch clock. Like Max Scherzer took one game to adjust to the pitch clock. What did you see the next game? You saw him, like, use the pitch clock to his advantage. You know, like, it was like, 
I, I don't know. I, I think it's interesting. Like, I, I think I think it'll probably be. I think the effect is probably not going to be too too large. I think the velos on pitches is a good point. I think like seeing how many innings people go and pitch counts is going to be another thing to monitor. Seeing how nasty pitches are is going to be another thing to monitor. Like, are like sliders going to get as much depth? Are there going to be as many swinging strikes? But is that what MLB wants? You know, like offense. Mm. Excuse me, <laughs> offense is down across the board. <laughs> we just saw Raymond Burp in the middle of the podcast. Uh, yeah, That's I mean, fine, offense, dude. <laughs> offense is down across the board. So, like in that lieu, it's almost like potentially uh, uh, a plus. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm very curious how it goes. I, I know, again, I, I know they trotted out in like, uh, like certain leagues before. I, I still need to do like a little bit more research to actually have like a very, like, Concrete take, but I mean, one thing. One thing I know for sure. One one thing I'm out on is I've seen people like suggest that they keep the pitch clock uh, and take it off for the ninth inning. I think that's a terrible idea. Yeah, it like you gotta be able to set standardize it. Yeah. It has to having be standardized. Set, yeah. 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 Having yeah. set of rules for the first eight innings and then taking it off for the ninth inning is like crazy. It would give closer yeah. so much leverage and just like. Yeah, it, it, it would be such a weird, like, like tactical, uh, like, not to, like, add to the game. But anyways, yeah, th- th- that'll be yeah. very interesting. I mean, I keep going back to, like, the fans' point of view. Like, you said just change it for, like, the ninth inning. Like, yeah. I, I agree that that's a terrible idea to, like, standardize yeah. the rule. And, like, yo, ninth inning, yeah. all out, go for it. Yeah. But, like, say you are in a situation like the Mike Trout situation. I know that wasn't yeah. the, the pitch clock or whatever, but, like, if you're watching, like, uh, you know, say it's the World Series or whatever, like an important game with your favorite players yeah. at it, if you're in the ninth inning and you have, like, a showdown or whatever, yeah. like, just the anticipation of, like, I want to cherish this moment, yeah, you know, like, ridiculous to be yeah. like, oh, he only has, like, 20 seconds to, to pitch it, so you better yeah. hurry this up. Instead of, like, the whole crowd cheering for as loud as possible, for as long as possible, like yeah. that, it would make the moment a little bit better. But yeah, I am interested to see like the the data behind like how it turns out. Obviously, I wish no ill will on any of the pitchers, so I hope that like <laughs> doesn't <laughs> raise injury or whatever. But I'm I'm out of shape as hell. So like, if you told me I gotta like throw that many times like in yeah, that short amount of time, one, like you throw one pitch and, <laughs> and then you run off the mound. <laughs> Oh, dude, I, I take, like, even when I wasn't playing shape, I'm taking yeah. my sweet time. I want to have my breath under me. I want to, like, be fully yeah. locked in for every pitch. So, like, if you gave me a time clock or whatever, like, I'm just stepping off and then, like, I'm taking my time. Make it miserable yeah. for the hitters, you know? I'm a yeah. little selfish, but, like, yeah. that's the best part about being a pitcher. You you have the ball. Yeah. You can be as selfish as you want, and they're taking that well, away. It used to, be, it used to be about being as selfish as you want. Now, now, now you got to play by the rules. Whatever, man. Whatever. All you got to do to be a good hitter is get on base three out of ten times, you know? That's all you got to do. Three and a half. Three and a half. Three, three out of ten times. <laughs> three out of ten isn't that good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm very curious how, like, fan attention is going is, is to change, too, right? Because that's, that's most of it, right? Like, just getting more fans and, and, and keeping – or not getting more fans, but, like, retaining fan interest and uh, getting more revenue probably. So yeah, I, I'm curious. I mean, yo. So what's you, what's your take on this? So like, you go to a Mariners game, right? They stop serving in the seventh inning, and the pitch clock's in play. You know, you you want to enjoy that game. It's your Friday night, Seattle summer. It's 75 degrees. It's going to be light until 10 p.m. I'm still in the beers, bro. Quicker, I'm still in my back pocket, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're stocking up. Yeah, no, but, but, but yeah, what we're going to ask, like, like, a, like less time to, or like the seventh inning comes faster. Well, yeah, like they, they want to make the games faster. Stadiums, that's how they make their money is sales at the stadiums, tickets, all that. It's like you're, you're cheating the, the fans out of a longer experience as well. That's what I was going to say. I, I'm curious how the revenue actually shifts because, yeah, the games will be shorter in person. Also, like the broadcasting, like, right, like you, like you, you broadcast a larger audience. You have like like advertisers pay you more money because they have like more time to like put in their ads like whatever right like the games are gonna be shorter. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm I'm very curious. Um, I mean, yeah, like one of the most momentous like 
different seasons coming up because, again, like, stuff has not changed for a while. I, I mean, I, 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 I think the shift stuff is going to be – I mean, I, I think the Pitchcock, yeah, I think Pitchcock is going to get more headlines, but I think the shift stuff is going to be, like, potentially, like, even more impactful in the stats. Oh, yeah. so many players you can just game on the shift, dude. You can just game. You know, they pull yeah. up, yeah, they pull the ball like X percent of the time. Like, of course, you're going to like – and to be honest, again, I, like I'm talking from a totally analyst point of view. I, 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 I'm not that hyped on the shift ban. Like, I, I, no. I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not like bummed, bummed on it, but like, dude. It's going to change you know, the game like crazy. Like, knowing that you, you can like set up to get someone out and all of a sudden it's like, okay, like just imagine like the shortstop's like, all right, I know the moment – like. The ball gets hit. I'm spreading that fucking way because I know this motherfucker always pulls it. You know, it's just like it's just like a very obvious like crux. You know, like or not crux, crutch, right? Like you're like, okay, this is clearly helping this person out. This would be the zone if if you're playing everything fair. Like you know where the ball is coming, or the ball is like almost all the time it's coming. Like you want to be there. I don't know. I I, I mean, yeah. I'm I'm I, I, I'm I'm probably. Man, I don't know. Again, on the spot, like, like overall, I'm, like, tentatively excited just to see change and see, like, the ripple effect and stuff. Pitch clock, pitch clock, I think 20 seconds is, like, pretty low. Um, if it was, like, something yeah. insane, right? Like, if, if it was, like, if it was, like, 50 seconds, I mean, not, not, I mean, 50 seconds is stupid. Nobody, nobody takes 50 seconds. But if, if it was, like, something, like, insane, just a cap, like, you know, if, if it was just, like, something under whatever Kenley Jansen takes... You know, that, that'd be fine. Because Kenley Jensen takes <laughs> so fucking long with pitches, bro. This takes and, and, and I'm saying this as like as like a as like a like overall like I've rooted for Kenley Jensen like plenty of times. I'm like, dude, hurry the fuck up, bro. I gotta get somewhere in like ten minutes. Like you gotta hurry up. But like <laughs> he takes too long. But I think twenty seconds is a, is a little low. The shift though, man, I don't know. I just think that's like way too much of an asset for people that are like one dimensional. Not one yeah. dimensional. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Like less well rounded as hitters. Well, yeah. Like even like the DH situation. Like yeah. I'm. Yeah. I, I don't know the actual stats behind it, but like, you know, they're probably going to pull the ball like crazy. You know, power hitter in that position, and you know, like what what's going to outweigh or like change the scale on the time of the game, the shift, just because like you know you run into the three four hitter, maybe they're you know dead pull hitters or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And you can't shift on them maybe, you know, that out turns into a double, yeah. you know, yeah. like stuff like that. And then pitch clock involved. But, you know, I, I have a, a biased opinion just cause I, I was pitching. Yeah. So like, yeah. I hate the pitch clock, yeah. but I know the shift is going to change the game so dramatically, yeah. uh, you know, just cause you can pull those numbers up. Like, yeah, this guy pulls the ball X amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. So like, let's, let's break into this shift, see their spray charts. Like that's going to be so screwy no matter where you're at. And, you know, may, maybe that's what helps out the fans. Cause like, I don't know if I know you've been to Mariners games, but like have you ever been to game like at Wrigley or anything like that, those fans buy into the game. Dude, like, I've been at a great game at Wrigley. I've been, I've been at a couple games at Wrigley. And one thing I've noticed, I, I like, I like brought this up before to someone and, and, and I think they agreed, but, uh, bro, the, the sun just like fucks people up. Like the way Wrigley's like built. I've seen more drop balls in the outfield at Wrigley than anywhere else, dude. It's just like, uh, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like the, the, the angle, like, the, uh, like, like, I don't know. Like, it's just like people drop the fucking ball in the outfield yeah, at Wrigley. Dude. It's, it's wild stuff. Like, uh, I love going to Mariners games, but I remember when I was, like, a teenager, I went to a game at Wrigley with our team, and I was like, getting to my seat, had my popcorn and soda or whatever. Yeah. And this like 40 year old man was like, sit the fuck down. <laughs> I was like, got it. All right. We're watching baseball today, yeah. dude. Like people have like a greater love for the game in, in certain stadiums. So like, you know, that's, that's a huge part of like these changes that are happening yeah. in baseball. Like they, they have to appeal to the fans yeah. because like those sales numbers go down. It's not great. And like, the effect it has on the players, like it better be closely monitored. That, that's all I'm saying, dude. <laughs> yeah. You can't be gassing yeah. the boys like that. I, I mean, yeah. I, I just don't know if you can go back. Like, like, do you think you like, 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 like say people have like, 
CPO's VLO go, go, goes down. People don't like people like revenue doesn't go up. Fin hints go slightly down. Do you think they revert back to no pace clock? Uh, I think it'll take a few years of outliers before like that happens. Like, you know, whether it's revenue, viewing percentage, injuries, like a year or two of outliers because of a specific rule. I feel like that'll change it. But other than yeah. that, like, you know, it, it'll give people a bad rep if like, you know, one year they got the pitching clock and then like as soon as spring training starts says yeah. psych. I'm yeah. out. <laughs> For Verlander's throwing less hard, bro. We got we gotta bounce it. We gotta bounce <laughs> yeah. It. Yeah. Dude dude's throwing five miles an hour less after four innings because he's gassed. Yeah. 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 Um okay. Um uh, I, I, also, I was going to ask. Like, I honestly don't know, uh, but uh, you know, I want to ask a couple of loose questions for them to podcast. Oh, uh, dude, what, I got what, some loose questions for you too. Oh, let's dude. Go. Okay, good because I'm I'm, I'm I'm a little bit lit off these uh, hazies, dude. I haven't eaten lunch, so I'm just going off a breakfast sandwich and, and two hazies. Um, That's fine. Well, it's Friday. Oh uh, yeah, I was, I was going to ask where, where, where are you living right now? Are you still at Gordo's old place? No, I'm not in Gordo's place anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm with my girlfriend in Bonnie Lake, so we're, we're out here booing, trying to buy a house Bonnie in this Lake? beautiful market we got. Yeah. Oh, shit. M- Mr. Hans, I, yeah, I got Mr. some Hans. questions for you, dude. It's Mr. I got Hans, some questions bro. for you. It's Mr. Hans. Knock that off, dude. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we, we went through my background, dude. Let's, let's hear a little bit about your background, because you obviously are very smart. People wanted that. How did you get involved in like baseball and driveline in general? I've never heard this story. Like, where did you go to school? Like, what, what's the deal, dude? Okay, okay what's your okay. background, dude? Okay, uh, I'm I'm down tell it. I'm down tell it. I'm I'm a crack, crack, crack open another beer. This might go poorly. That's uh, fine, dude. Fired up, fired up. All right. I mean, background wise, okay. So so uh, uh, went to school at Berkeley. Um, was a stats econ major. Always wanted to work in sports. Like out of Berkeley, I had like a little bit of uh, student debt, so I was like, I gotta fucking smoke that. So I, I worked at a healthcare startup, just doing data stuff, but like really boring shit, just like hospital stuff. Just rip. I mean, I was ripping like fat ass databases. I was working with like 30, 40 million like rows of like oh, hospital damn. patient records. It was automating that. Um, but like, I, I, I made like a promise to myself. I was like, after two years, I'm gonna start looking for another job because I don't want to get sucked in and just like working at like a decent job for like whatever, just to like you know, make it work. Like I'll take a pay cut to work in sports. So after two years, I just like mass applied to a bunch of stuff and to make it like, to, to prompt me even more to leave my job. I like committed to like, once my lease ends, I'm just going to hop around in different spots. And then like, I'm going to hop around until I get another job. So I'd quit my job or not, not quit my job. I decided I'd like finish my lease in like July, 2017. Uh, and I, I, um, I couch surfed for three weeks at my friend's place, then traveled in Columbia for like four weeks, came back, couch surfed for four weeks, couch surfed for four weeks. And then like, like with, with like at that point, like halfway through that, I got a call from like Bodie. I got applied to, again, I applied to a ton of places. I saw a job line posting on Fangraphs. I applied to it that same night at like 10 30 PM. Bodie called me cause, cause he said he was going through resume. Saw I was on West coast time and just called me and like, you know, like, like I'm, I mean, most people like don't pick up random phone calls. I'll actually pick up unless, unless it says like potential spam. I'll, I'll pick up a random yeah. phone call. Uh, and I picked up, started talking to him. I like put out a couple of blog posts of like sports analysis. Like one of them was like a Markov chain for Super Bowl betting. And uh, do you know what a Markov chain is? No, I, I, I've heard of it. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It, 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 so, so high level is basically like you, you have like a matrix of like different states. And then like, it's like, what is the probability of each state moving to another state? So it's like, like if, if, if it's a diagonal, like, uh, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to go into it. I've drank too many yeah, beers. Let's go into Mark <laughs> point, point being, Point being, like I was doing it more from like an academic point of view. And you can look at this up, by the way. You can look up, uh, like I used to write under this uh, Medium, um, you, you know Medium.com is? It's like a old school, like blog, not old school, but like people, people used to write on it more. Blogging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and my uh, username was Glant- Glanton and the Judge which are like two characters from a uh, Cormac McCarthy's uh, book, Blood Meridian. Um, he, he, he like wrote no country for old men, the road, like a, cu- a couple of things that are like kind of famous, but yeah, I put out like a, a, a big blog article on like how to like optimize betting. It was a Falcons uh, Patriots Super Bowl. 
the one that the, the Pats came back from like 23 or 24 uh, point deficit. So I put out a, a, a blog on how I would use Markov chains to optimize betting on that game. And I ended up being right in it. But I, I was saying, I was like, I'm just doing this academically. I actually don't believe that like, this is how you should do it or whatever. And, and, and Bodhi read it and he'd use like Markov chains for his own like gambling stuff, like year, like decades before, you know? So he called me, we talked, I flew out to Seattle like a week or two later. And it was funny. I think I've told Buddy this, bro. But the, the night I flew out to Seattle, like the night before, because he bought me a flight out of LAX to land in Seattle at 6 a.m. So like out of LAX at like 4.30. Yeah. And, and, and I had a friend who lived near LAX. So I was like, I'm just going to crash this place. Because at the time I was NorCal. So I was like, in LAX. Well, I think I told him I was in LA. So I was like, yeah, buy, buy me a flight out of LAX. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. So I, so I go to, over to my homie's place and... I, like, I was expecting, like, you know, let's grab a dinner and then, like, I'll crash early. But like, we're grabbing dinner and he's like, it's my birthday, by the way. Or, like, what, I, I forgot how he brought it up. I was like, oh, bro, let's go out. <laughs> Happy birthday, dude. Let's <laughs> yeah, get I, was, I, was, I, was like, I was like, let's go out. Let's go out, you know? So, so I mean, we went out crazy late, but we were out until, like, 12, 1230. And I had an alarm at 430, right? So, oh, damn. I slept, like, three, three, four hours. Get on the plane. Land. I'm fucking dead, right? I'm fucking absolutely dead. Bodhi picks me up, uh, takes me to like a like a brunch place in like uh, Magnolia, and it, it's like an all you can eat like uh, brunch spot. So I pound like eight cups of coffee because I'm just absolutely dead. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting after it, dude. Let's go. And, and, and then after I pound eight cups of coffee, I'm just like smoked, right? I'm just like ripping a bathroom every like 45 minutes. So I'm just like, all right, like my stomach is roiling, but I, I'm basically with Bodhi the whole day. So I, like he takes me a tour around the facility. I talked to like Bauer was in throwing. I talked to Bauer. Uh, like basically take like three interviews of Bodie with like Bodie and like Dwayne back in the day, Dwayne St. Arnold, shout out original, uh, pro- project manager for, uh, for, uh, for track. Um, I think I saw OC, I think I saw Yabin, Joe Marsh, but yeah, kick it off with Bodie flew back, uh, like texted Bodie, like after like, yo, blah, blah, like I really want the job. Um, and then, yeah, and then I, I got it. I, I, I think to be honest, man, I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I never confirmed this, but I'm pretty sure he was waiting on. I'm pretty sure you know you know Josh Kalk is. He's like I a think so? he's like a pretty like, high respected can... analyst, uh, or like you know just on the analyst side who now works for the Minnesota Twins. Or at least mm-hmm. did the last couple of years. I don't know if he's w- uh, there right now, but I'm pretty sure Bodie's trying to get him as like the first choice, and he built. So I'm pretty sure I was the second choice. So I'll fucking take that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Bodie told me like a couple weeks later, he's like, yeah, you know, would love to have you as a as a quantitative analyst. At the time, like Jovan was like 18, 20 people. I think I was like the first, uh, I was like the first, or I was one of the first like third party hires. Cause you know, it was like a time like the company was like Bodie, Mike, OC, Joe, um, a couple interns. I, I think Lindley and Brady had just interned and gone back to school on a pitching floor. It was like Jake's Sam Breen, um, you know, one or two other people that had like trained, uh, Brian, you know, like it was like it was like most of the people had trained for with, like with Driveland. And they're like, you you want a job? We're trying to expand, blah blah. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty sick coming in, um, like as a first, like you know, full time uh, third party hire. I remember I Let's showed go, up, dude. I, I, I remember like the, like for the interview, like or like for, like like when I flew in. I mean, I, I still don't. I have like no like nice clothes, as, as you probably know from just having seen me like walk around. And, and dude, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you what I what I. Uh, what, yeah, let me what, see what you're what? rocking, dude. Let me see what you're rocking right now. No, uh, well, I mean, you know, I'm not gonna show you what I'm rocking right now, but dude, I'll show you. This, this is what I rolled in a drive on with. This is what I Hell yeah, a drive on with, dude. That's so, how everyone knew you'd get down, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I rolled in that and like uh, some like khaki uh, long pants, and then like did not wear anything besides like a random ass t-shirt and board shorts for like a year straight. And like Joe would be giving me shit, be like, dude. First day you fucking fooled us, dude. You rolled in with you a spaghetti yeah, shirt, dude. Yeah, yeah, spaghetti yeah, shirt with like zebras and and and, and fucking yeah, actually just zebras, it's different colored zebras. Um, but yeah, that, that's how I got started. That's the move, dude. That's the move. Did yeah. what, what number employee were you? Were you in the thirties or forties? I think I was around eighteen. You're around twenties. Did you start yeah. working before I did? I, I, I literally my so I got hired like December twenty seventeen. And then uh, Bodhi sent me a bunch of stuff. I was doing like some online stuff, and then I, I think like like I, like 
I, I like New Year's Eve down in SF. Um, and then I drove up, I, I drove up a rental on like January 3rd to driveline. And that thing on my first day was like fifth or sixth, January 2018. Damn. Yeah. I, you, cause I was training there for a few years. I, I'd have to check what number employee I was. Yeah. But uh, I always tell everyone like your story of like how you work here is so much cooler than mine. Cause I, mine, I mean, I don't know. I feel like my, my shit is more random. I feel, I feel like, I feel like, like coming up the company and like training is like also pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good. Like, you know, just storyline. Well, like literally how I got my initial, I started working like part-time before I was full-time, but I was just like yeah. training. And I just remember the day, like Gordo, absolute homie just comes up and he's like, Hey, you want to like work here? And I was like, all right. And then I just got like an email for like Gusto and all that. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm working here. Like, yeah, straight up out of holes. Like I could fix that, dude. Dude, uh, yeah, I, I, I love Gordo. I, I, I gotta get back in town when when, when he's uh, back up there. You said April first to to when? Yeah, uh, probably not too long. I mean, spring training will come to an end yeah. here soon. So, but yeah, dude, fire me up, fire me up, dude. Yeah, I, I always love telling people who like are outside of driveline the mixture of people that work. Yeah. At driveline, it's it's hilarious, dude. Yeah, like you you went to to Berkeley. Yeah, you what would you say your your major was? You stats got, and like, what? Yeah, stats and econ. Like I got you know I, I went to school. I was playing sports the whole time, but like how you came to to driveline and like how I came to driveline, like pretty pretty different worlds. I went to to school in Idaho and I was like focused on baseball. I got a you know. Uh, one major, two minors, and like pre- pretty random, pretty random happenings at, at driveline baseball. I always love telling people that. Got dude, some yeah. MIT, MIT I mean, dudes I, like you, dude. Dude, I mean, yeah, the, the first couple of hires were, were, I mean, they were all pretty crazy hires because, like, I think the person that got hired after me was was Chrissy. Oh yeah, that one, dude. that one was a fucking random ass hire. Dude, yeah, just build, <laughs> building the VBT out, dude. Dude, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's wild. Like, the, the amount of stuff we've worked on over the years, it's, it's just nuts. And, and, like, yeah, like you said, like, the, the storylines, the characters. Um, yeah. Like, the, the vibe, too. I mean, I mean the, the vibe's still, I mean, first off, the vibe's still pretty fucking strong. I, I'm, I'm bummed. I mean, I'll tell you more off air of, of why, why I'm not up there full-time, but I'm, I'm really bummed I'm not, like, back in Seattle full-time. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, shit is fun. But also, shit used to be so wild west back in the day, dude. She used to be so oh. wild west back in the day, dude. So wild west, dude. Like when, like that changed is. I feel like the wild west. Like obviously, it's difficult to be nostalgic about like the way driveline yeah. used to be. But like when we went from two four four three and five four old buildings to the new building, yeah. like that's when my mindset like changed. Yeah. Like uh, I'm still about the Wild West, but <laughs> like it, so it went from just a little bit. Yeah, it went from just like, hey, knock that out. I'm like, I'm down. Yeah. Let's roll. To like, I'm I'm dealing with architects, contractors, yeah, yeah. the city, like d- doing all that. It was like, oh boy. Well, that's, that's what I was going to ask you. That's what I was asking about the uh, like, like you know, the behind the scenes on the on the facility stuff. So I'm just imagining you like talking to like people like. Yo, we, we good doggy? Yo, what's up? Yeah, <laughs> just like super informal. Yeah. Like, what's up, bro? Well, yeah, I'd, what you I'd have to get, I'd have to get super formal with people, like <laughs> just being a, a total baseball dude my entire yeah. life, and like you know, uh, one of the funniest parts about it from our original move from two four to to our new spot was our architect company. So, like, I didn't have much of an idea of what I was doing. I was, like, learning and shooting from the hip, like, about all we need yeah. to uh, do this, like, completely legally and, like, get it knocked out and yeah. what they need to provide. And, uh... Like, what's a fire alarm? Uh, is, that, like, is that when you smoke too much and, like, hot box the... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pretty much, dude. Pretty much. But uh, <laughs> our first architect, like zero idea about baseball in general yeah. and our facility in Kent is 50,000 square feet pretty much. Yeah. And it's all baseball stuff besides the offices. 
So I'm describing this stuff to him. And I was like, yeah, we're going to have netting hung down from the rafters. It's going to be this size. And he was like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. So I was harping on this dude, like, from the get-go of the project. And this dude's boss called, like, the, the head of this architectural firm, yeah. like, emailed me this long-ass thing and was like, due to your insane demands, like, I don't know if we can do this project. So I'm calling him, like, yeah. four to five times a yeah. day, like, six emails a day, like, yeah. you need to put this in there, this in there, figure this out. <laughs> And oh, forest plates under everything, bro. We're fucking digging under and then fucking yeah. building over. Yeah, like we're going to cut the concrete out, put force plates in. Yeah. And this dude was like, dude, like you need to come to Seattle and talk to me because you are ridiculous right now. <laughs> and literally, so their boss like called me and emailed me and I had to have Mike, uh, like it was almost good cop, bad cop. Yeah. He had to like apologize for me. But at the same time, we're like, yeah, we need to get this done, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Keep harping on them. It was it was hilarious. Uh, there was just a lot of you know legality in it. That I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a recurring like behind the scenes thing as a drum and play. Like, there's all like parking is always going to be an issue. I feel like you know, like, you know, like yeah. na- neighbors complaining about about sounds. It's always going to be an issue, right? Like, it's just like we just have like. Like we are high maintenance, you know. Like then we, we are just high maintenance. Like we gotta like we, we gotta find a place like not only that has a space, everything which gotta be like, you know, like, we, we gotta like, give wads of cash to like our neighbor, like shut the fuck up. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not to not to that extent, but like going into it, like our company yeah. in general yeah. is like high maintenance for a real estate yeah. need, but yeah. like the training floor product, the product yeah. that we put out because of that. Absolutely immaculate vibes. Yeah, like, yeah, yo, course. if you want to bump Taylor Swift at max level yeah, and yeah. start yelling at dudes, like, go for it. Yeah. Like, do it. And in the summer when we have, you know, close to what? Uh, I was just looking at this. Like, bro, 100, I, thought you knew Zoho, bro. I thought you knew Zoho, dude. Screen shirt. I do. I, Zoho, I, I, of course. I will, dude. I will. <laughs> uh, but, like, per hour having – let's. Yeah let's round and say like 180 dudes an hour yeah. and we only have X amount of allocated parking spots. Yeah. And, you know, before we got the lease uh, in our permits, we had 96 extra per- parking spots put together and our neighbors were like, yo, what's that all about, dude? Why do they get all the parking? And it's like, ah, hey, we got see homies dude, rolling through. We got homies rolling through that want to get better, dude. Yeah. Well, okay. So first off, um, yeah, wait. What, 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 what's your go-to T Swift song? Because I've actually recently, like, kind of low-key become a Taylor Swift fan. All right, you can tell me after the, the podcast if you should clip that part out or not. Will do. Yeah. Anyways, we should, we should probably wrap it before this gets this gets too out of hand. But uh, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good to have you on. We'll do something when I'm in town too. Uh, we'll try to. Well, when are you coming back into town? TBD. TBD. Right, um, just let but, me know, uh, dude. Yeah. Thanks for having but, me yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. And I'll, I'm going to stop this so I can ask you after if I should cut that, cut that, that one joke. But uh, yeah. Peace.